All right, Johnny Mack in the house. The Eagles getting ready for the Texans. And again, I don't understand. I, I don't think I can make it any clearer. Like, this guy texts it back in and says, no one will be scared of the Eagles if they make the playoffs. I didn't say that anyone would be scared of the Eagles. No team. I, I'm not suggesting that another NFL football team will be scared if the Eagles make the playoffs. We need to pull I the audio. I said my... Pull the audio, what Josh. I, what I said was the narrative from the media that week will be that the Eagles are the team that no one's going to want to play because they're the hot team coming in. If they make the playoff, they're, they're going to be playing Chicago in Chicago. And, and that's where I think you're – that's where people are having an issue with what you're saying, which is – I don't care who they're playing. I don't care if they're playing the that, Saints, the Rams, everything. the Patriots. It doesn't matter. My point is the narrative going into that game will be, oh, they they got in because they're the hot team. They're the defending Super Bowl champions. It doesn't mean that the Bears or any other team is going to be afraid to play I'm them. I'm not saying that they're going that the team is going to be afraid. I'm saying that it's illogical to even bring that up that the Eagles are the team that nobody wants to play and then say that the Bears won't be afraid of them. Like it, it's two completely disconnecting thoughts. Um, no, because the, the, I'm telling you, the way that the media works, they're going to try to pump this game up in a way. And the that's way not going to be the way, though. Is that's not going to be the way. The defending Super Bowl champions no. snuck into the playoffs by winning three straight games, and now, John McMullen, no. they're going to say, this is the team that no one wants to play. Right? Oh, yeah, I agree with Mike there. Yeah, that's how no. the, the media is going to portray it. And that's what, how... What, like, what media, though? Like... Deion Sanders well, yeah, they're, they're on TV. NFL Network, ESPN, that's how they're going to spin I, it. I, I vehemently disagree things. with both of you that the, that the top narrative is going to be the Philadelphia Eagles are a team that nobody wants to play, and then the cut shot is going to show them taking on the Chicago Bears in well, Chicago. You, you have to understand, you have to understand, A, they have to make the playoffs. And if they make the playoffs, then they come in. Uh, winning three straight, and you got the whole Nick Foles narrative. That's the narrative, the though. Season. That's the one, yeah, John, but, that they're going to build off of, not Mike's little of Chris and, one. And then everyone is going to lean on the fact that the Super Bowl champions snuck in the playoffs, and they're going to talk about experience. Understand all these things are, are media-slash-fan-driven. Teams are not afraid to play other teams. Right. Uh, that's, I that's 100% agree with that. I don't think the Bears are worried about playing yeah. the Eagles. I'm saying the storyline going in is the Eagles have won five out of six, three straight. Do the Super Bowl champions finally have their mojo back? They're the team that no one's going to want to face. And then they'll go into Chicago and we'll see what happens. Well, that, we that's not going to be the narrative, though. We, it's going to be Foles saving the season. It's it, going to be Nick Foles. Saying, no, it's not. Be, they're both going to be part of the narrative. Oh, okay, but, yeah, but let's I mean, pie chart it. It's going to be 70-30. All on Foles. This league, John, you know it in and out. This well, league yeah, covers quarterbacks. Quarterback uh, thank you. If you want to put a percentage on it. Yes, I uh, for Mike Gill's sake, is, I want to put a percentage on it. <laughs> yeah, I think the whole thing, I think both of you bring up valid points. Everybody's going to uh, kill the Nick Foles narrative to death. Uh, but there's also going to be a Super Bowl experience. The Malcolm Jenkins, they know how to win. The Bears All haven't made the playoffs since 2010. Well. Yeah, I yeah exactly. Yeah, which is it's why how risky. all going to factor into uh, Nick Foles beating this team. Yeah, and and then the Bears will go out and, and drum them because they have so much they have so much talent on defense. But, and by the way, we're uh, just assuming that the Bears are the three seed, as as our friend Jeff Mosher just texted. He says, I think it's fair to say the Rams would be scared if they fell to the three seed and had to play the six seed Eagles. Hmm. Well, no, again, I, I, I disagree with most, and I'll tell them that the Rams, again, this is all fan-driven, media-driven. The teams are not afraid to play teams. They're just not. I, I mean, we look at this game uh, coming up this week, and there's a lot of hand-wringing because the Eagles have to win it. And I was on the phone. I, I, I was talking to you guys yesterday. The Eagles' defensive line, Fletcher Cox, gave them electric scooters. They're out in the parking lot having a ball. They're not Turn again too. about playing. They're they're not again, yes. worried How's that about back? playing. Yeah, they're not worried about playing the Houston Texans. They're not afraid about playing the Houston Texans. I mean, that's just it. it, it 
that kind of stuff doesn't right. exist. Nobody is afraid of playing. That's all fans that are saying, I don't like this matchup. Oh, that's a yeah, bad exactly. matchup. Yeah, we, we, keep exactly. going, we keep going back to that re- misnomer. That, that's not part of the, the convo, though, Mike. It's more about what they would focus on. All right, I, I just, again. Who? The meat, like anybody, I don't care if it's Deion Sanders or any of these idiots that are on our TV right now. <laughs> well, well, they're definitely going to go Nick Foles, Nick Foles, Nick Foles. Yeah, I mean, they're going to beat the you-know-what out of the living you-know-what out of it. Nick Foles is encompassing of no, oh, the team see. has won three straight. Goalposts moving they again. The, no, he's a part of the reason. The, he, if they won three in a row and made the playoffs, <laughs> they would say Nick Foles has again led this team to the playoffs. They're the defending Super You're telling me that that conversation would be null and void? You're an idiot. No, I'm saying that it's 30% <laughs> of a 100% conversation. All right, well – you, I want you to tell me when that week comes, yeah. because number one, if it comes, that will be first and foremost that the defending champions found a way, snuck into the playoffs. And That's now, going to be the lead story, not Nick Foles. It's all encompassing. Your, your guest He's just told part you. Of it. Your guest well, just told always, you it's, it's a quarterback, quarterback driven league. First. I mean, it's, yeah, it is a quarterback driven league. Uh, yeah. What, so what's I guess wrong with him point. today, John? If we're putting percentages on it, it's always quarterback, quarterback, quarterback. We talk, heck, this whole discussion of Carson Wentz versus Nick Foles, the foolishness right. of it all, is because everybody thinks the quarterback is responsible for winning a Super Bowl. He's a big part of it, but we talk about it all the time. If they act like nobody else is on the field helping those guys. And, and, and Doug Peterson talks about it all the time as an ex quarterback. Uh, they get more credit when teams win, more blame than they deserve when teams lose. That's just part of the deal. Yeah. It's a, it is quarterback, well, quarterback, sure. quarterback. You know, all and, and you're going to have people saying, like, Nick Foles saved the Eagles season and has now got the defending champions back into those playoffs. And nobody, you know, this is the team that no one wants. And, John, and, and exactly a couple right. Of, a couple now, of years I ago. Know, Mike, because you said it, Mike. You you said it on the countdown, the kickoff show. Look, who's most responsible for beating the Rams? I would argue, and I defensive say it all line. the time, the defensive line. Anybody talk about them? Anybody talk about Fletcher Cox being carted off with a hip injury? Nope. And then coming back and absolutely destroying the Rams' offensive line, one of the best games he's ever played. Nobody talks about that. They right. talk about the quarterback. Right, and you, you, you look back and, you know, part of the encompassing thing would be, yes, Nick Foles comes in. They've won three in a row, five out of six. Have the defending champions finally figured it out. That's going to be the – like and going into this game this weekend, if they were to win against the Texans, you've now beat two straight teams that have double-digit wins – and I think you're going to start to hear, did Nick Foles save the season? And this is the team that no one's you going just to want to said, face. You just said in order, maybe it was subconsciously, sure. but you just said in order, did Nick Foles save the season? And then are the Super Bowl champion, defending Super Bowl champions, it's the team all encompassing. No. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. All, all of it. Foles is a part of the reason why the narrative would be Foles that teams don't the want to play this. Narrative. Season. Yeah. He is the narrative. That's it. Like, there is no other narrative at that point. It's Nick Foles. It's Nick Foles versus Carson Wentz. Is it's Nick Foles a Hall of Famer if he wins another Super Bowl? And all these things around <laughs> Nick Foles. It's all Foles. I, it's Nick Foles. It's right down, da- John. It's right down to Foles' anatomy. Uh, all right. It's everything uh, with Foles. Yeah, it, it, it is going to be beaten over. Everybody's head like a part of his famous anatomy. But, John, but, you remember the uh, game. You remember. The, the, Kelly's first year when they got hot and went in, the narrative was they're the team nobody wants to play, and then they got knocked out in the first round. The, nobody was afraid of them. They were just – they're hot. They snuck it. They beat the yeah. Lions in that snowstorm. They ran the – they were the team that they nobody wanted to play. They set team records for offense that year. This team hasn't gotten out of the first half. Well, I, I think a lot different. I, I mean, people thought Chip Kelly was innovative. And they thought he was going to take this league by storm. Uh, and he did do a lot of things that people kind of have uh, taken from and, and run with. Uh, so it, it can differ. I, I mean, I think that was more coach-driven at that time. 
uh, and sure. people were mistaken about that. I think if the you're Eagles right, though, John. There's weekend, always some narrative, regardless if it's the coach or the quarterback or yeah, whatever the hell it is, the defending Super Bowl champions. It is some narrative comes into play about a team that this is for some reason, whatever it is, this team is the one you don't want to face. It doesn't necessarily mean it's true or accurate or that any team's afraid of them, but there is a story sometimes that propels that wild card team that gets hot late that teams sure. look at. Hey, I, I think if the Eagles win on Sunday, and I think they have a very good chance to do it, uh, I think, again, the story's going to be the defensive line beating up on the opposing offensive line. But well, I don't think too many people are going to talk about it. Well, and we I brought that up earlier. About- Mark Malone was on with us earlier, and that's one of the things he mentioned, John. They've given up 58 sacks this year, the most in the league. This offensive line, we've seen some bad offensive lines this year. The Giants, yeah, Minnesota, this, top, this, this one's right five. there. Yeah, top five bad offensive line, which is kind of amazing, and it speaks to how good Deshaun Watson is in uh, extending plays, some of the off-schedule stuff, how good DeAndre Hopkins is. Uh, But they have some weaknesses, and the main weakness is, yeah, I mean, they have one of the worst offensive lines in football. Uh, And it's, it's bottom five in the league. It's very similar to Minnesota. So you're going to see uh, another opportunity for Fletcher Cox and Michael Bennett and Brandon Graham uh, to have a big impact on the game. And I think people will notice it, and, and then they'll talk about Nick Foles. Well, what's been the disconnect, though? Because clearly Houston has been able to outplay all that. And I know the easy answer is the right and left foot feet of Deshaun Watson and his ability to also withstand a lot of hits because he's been hit so many times. But the Eagles aren't the first team to say, hey, let's take advantage of that awful, porous offensive line and know that we can put our hands and shoulder pads on that quarterback all day and have come up short. Yeah, I mean, you're right, and and that's why they deserve a lot of credit in the fact that they have big-time playmakers, and defensively as well with J.J. Watt and and Jadavian Clowney and and, uh, McKinney, who's a pro bowler, and and Whitney Merciless, who comes in as a pass rusher. Uh, They have a lot of talent on the defensive side of the ball as well. Uh, Hopkins, we mentioned, best receiver in football. Uh, it's going to be another stern test, and Avante Maddox is going to be out there again. I, I don't know how you stop that guy. Uh, you know, Avante's five foot nine, and you got we talk about fifty fifty balls with all Sean Jeffrey. This guy's the best in football at that kind of uh, at that kind of play. Uh, it just worlds above even a guy like Jeffrey who's really good at it. And and then Watson is. Uh, a very young quarterback who has amazing gifts. And, and we talk about all those sacks. You know, part of that is on the quarterback. Like here when Carson Wentz is playing. Same type of mentality, same type of situation. Always thinks he can make a play. Always think he, he can extend plays, keep it going. Always looking for the big play. So a lot of similarities there. And sometimes you get the big play. Yeah, and, and and sometimes it, it, it comes back to haunt you. But obviously the Texans have won 10 of 11, so they're playing good football. But there there has been a lot of close games in that Including 10 of Saturday 11. Night. They no, got, I, they I, got I sacked it. six times Saturday night against the Jets. And, and listen, the Jets have been horrendous on defense except one area, and that's third down. So it, it, it's not out of the question for that defense to kind of limit teams to that middle of the 20s if they can keep people off. But forget New York for just a second. Do you expect or anticipate Houston to play a little chess and put maybe a double on Alshon, knowing how comfortable Nick Foles is throwing to him and almost forcing that offense to go back to Zach Ertz as consistent as he was, knowing that that he can have a big game and that offense can still sputter? Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I I mean, I... People haven't figured it out yet, and uh, maybe it's because Nick hasn't played a lot. I mean, last year uh, he came in late, obviously, uh, and then you get to the playoffs, and and this year he plays the first two games, and then he sits and he has to come in late again. So you don't have that large sample size of, of watching film week after week after week, uh, and and 
we always talk about this being a copycat league, which it is, but it's a very slow copycat league. It's a very slow moving league. Uh, it's like trying to turn an ocean liner the way these guys move. Sometimes coaches I'm talking about, uh, and he's a one read quarterback and it's, that's what Nick is comfortable doing. And that's why the RPOs work. And that's why the, the, the 50, 50 balls work. It's sort of, Take, get the football and, and get that first read, get it out of his hands and throw it to him. And at some point, people are going to figure that out. But without the large sample size, they haven't figured it out. It's going to be interesting to see if Houston realizes that and sort of starts to jump routes, which is what I think they should do. Yeah, and John, you know, you mentioned the Eagles' defensive front. You're right. I, that's something that I said, look, the Eagles – were successful last year because it was memorable that their defensive line made impacts in in games and in throughout the season. Now, I know you would argue that they've been pretty much as good. I just don't feel like they've made the same impact for whatever reason. You know, maybe because the secondary isn't as good, so even their impact being what it is, they don't have the talent to uh, capitalize on the impact they're making for whatever reason. But last week they did. And this is an area in this week's game where they could really, really make a difference. And if that defensive front gets back to that level, that's another reason why they could be an interesting team in January because everything kind of changes when the weather changes and that defensive front being that impactful could really, you know, and I'm not suggesting that they're going to win the Super Bowl or yada, yada, but the Saints have lost three offensive linemen. The Rams line has all the, it has issues. Um, you know, there's a lot of bad offensive lines in this league. We know that, and the Texans are one of them. Yeah, uh, it, it, I I agree with what you said. I, I think the defensive line has been really good for most of the year, uh, and I think it, it's a concert thing and the fact that the back end hasn't been able to hold up because of injuries. I think that's been the bigger issue. Uh, but if you look at the individual players, uh, Fletcher Fletcher's never played better. I, I mean, he's better this year than last year. Uh, he's the second-best interior defensive lineman in football, and he just outplayed the best uh, on, on that big stage. He was better than Aaron Donald, uh, and he was banged up as well. I think everybody – I think this team made a mistake early in the season by trying to play Barnett uh, more than Bennett uh, because of the youth, because we didn't know how long Michael Bennett is going to be around. But I think now you see that Michael's on the field consistently, how good of a player he is. Uh, and best defensive lineman on the best defense of this generation. is that That's what Michael Bennett is, and he's still that type of player. And then you talk about Brandon Graham when your third best defensive lineman is Brandon Graham. That's pretty darn good. Uh, And Chris Long still playing at at a relatively high level. So what they don't have is the depth because of injuries. Barnett gone. Uh, Tim Jernigan was at practice today. Looks like he's on track to uh, coming back. So that'll help a little bit on the interior and Haloti Naga finally showed up, so maybe that'll help and continue as well. But those those starting four, the four that are out there the most now that Barnett is injured, they've been pretty darn good and and pretty consistently good from week to week. What's you know I don't have it in front of me, and shame on me for putting you on the spot here. But what's the contract situation with Jim Schwartz? Is this – I don't remember if this is a contract year or he can get out of it. Well, you can get out of any every, contract. Every year, year, right? Uh, yeah. But it, but is it, there it, any – I'm sorry. If you're – for a head coaching job, you can get out of any contract. Uh, if you're under contract, for instance, a couple of years ago, uh, John Filippo was uh, – the New York Jets wanted him to be the offensive Correct. coordinator. Uh the Eagles uh, didn't want to lose him. He was under contract. They were able to block that. But if they wanted to make him the head coach, could have left. Uh, so as far as head coaching goes, uh, you can leave at any time. Uh, the original deal with Jim, uh, I believe, was for uh, 
four, four years. years. I and think that was three Doug, years ago, two years ago. Yeah, I think with I, I think Doug's original one uh, was four years, but I have to check on that and before he signed the extension. Right. I, I guess uh, where I'm they, going is is if he doesn't get a head coaching job, which again, who the hell knows at this point? I mean, we've seen guys like Patricia get jobs in offensively dominated leagues, but I know that they always like the sexy quarterback coach as well. Is there? It's crazy because at the start of the season, middle of the season, there was so much heat on Schwartz. But I wonder if now we're talking about, hey, he didn't get a job head coaching, building an extension for him. Yeah, I mean, he's not going anywhere. Uh, Yeah, he's not going anywhere if uh, he can't get a head coaching job. I mean, Did you see, John and Aton, by the way, I don't mean to cut you off, but did you guys see, I just happened to see this, you guys may have seen it before, they had highlights of the Super Bowl. And it was like late in the game when Schwartz walked up to Peterson and said, "I'm going to get really aggressive. We're going to get the ball back for you." Did you see that that line? No, I did not see it. But obviously, no. you know, Jim. I, I think it was interesting after the Super Bowl. Jim uh, was probably the only person uh, on the Philadelphia Eagles side that was not happy. And uh, I remember uh, being in the bowels of U.S. Bank Stadium. Frank Reich was so happy. He took uh, about 30 minutes to talk with uh, two or three of us reporters. I was so thrilled. Jim was not happy with that performance of his defense, which is obvious for for reasons. Uh, But, you know, he always talks about the only stat that matters is, is, is winning on the scoreboard, and they were able to win the football game. Uh, I, this team has tremendous respect for him. I, I think he's a top-five defensive coordinator in this league. I know most people in Philadelphia don't agree with that. I, I don't know what they expect when you see what's happened in that defensive backfield and some of the names he has had to throw out there at times. And if you think about how he's been able to ramp up and improve, remember, the starting corners are now Avante Maddox, uh, Rasul Douglas, and and Cravon LeBlanc uh, as the nickelback. And you know what? Over the past two, three weeks, he's he's ramped them up pretty good, and you've certainly seen improvement. And that's – that exemplifies good coaching. That's what that's what coaching is. You know, it's Take crazy. What you have and make it as good as possible. He might be one of the most underrated sports personalities we've had in this city in the last fifteen years. <laughs> well, I, hey, I, I, you know, as far as the other stuff and and he's got the warts. Media. Yeah, I, I get it. Like he's not perfect, but I don't know anybody who is, including Doug Peterson, who has been far from it this year as a head coach i'm just saying as far as somebody who like i i I almost feel like this is the robert covington type of conversation about oh you know the eye test will tell you and then you look at what they've been able to do what he's been able to do on a perimeter and then you equate it with what you laid out with who he has out there on the field and what this defense has been able to do coming off a super bowl victory as well i i mean I don't know. It just seems like no, I, every I mean, week he gets more. I don't maligned. understand it. I, I've been talking all year about it. I, I do not understand uh, why this fan base uh, doesn't understand what they have at defense coordinator. And not everybody. Some do. Uh, I think most don't. Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with just the simplified mentality of blitz, blitz, blitz. And right. I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I joked about it before. Maybe it's because too many people play Madden and it works on the video game. I don't know. Uh, you don't blitz when Rasul Douglas is your corner. Uh, nice. And if you do blitz, and by the way, you don't blitz much when Jalen Mills and even Ronald Darby are out there. They're not great corners. They're just better than what you have now. Uh, and then when you go through the season, and I've run down the litany of plays, every time they do blitz, bad things happen. Right. And yet, for some reason, people, people want him more. to blitz more. I, I don't. Yeah. I don't. I don't get it. Uh, John McMullen will be back tomorrow. He'll give his pick for the game, the matchups in this game. We'll look at all the games around the Eagles' schedule. We're going to go over at five o'clock tonight. There's a very. Uh, uh, there's a lot of very impactful games 
in the Week 16 schedule. We'll break it all down coming up at J.F. McMullen on Twitter. And he appeared via the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Thank you, guys.